Hello, my name's Andy from Race Technology, and in today's video I want to talk about the data that's available from your uh, GoPro uh, GPS enabled camera and what um, data then you can access from uh, when you use our professional data analysis software. So this is uh, one of our office test GoPros, this is a GoPro 7. Um, so as you probably know, uh, a lot of the uh, cameras in the GoPro range have an integrated GPS receiver. So the, um, the receiver in here is actually a very good quality GPS receiver uh, made by a company called Ublox. It actually uses both GPS and Galileo uh, satellites to track its position and velocity. Um, also integrated in here is an accelerometer chip, so that means it can measure forwards and sideways and vertical accelerations. And there's also actually a gyro chip in there as well, so it can measure roll, pitch and yaw rates. Um, we're going to talk about the limitation of using those uh, later. But anyway, that's all the sensors that are actually embedded in here. So the GPS antenna, everything is obviously completely self-contained. Um, in terms of uh, how that's recorded, so when you record a video, an MP4 file, all that GPS data and all the accelerometer data is all put into that MP4 file and also the LRV file, so that's the lower resolution video file which is recorded um, in most GoPro modes. So the reason that GoPro are able to do that is simply because when the MP4 standard was developed, not only is it a container, container for media, so video and audio, it's also a general purpose container, so it can include all sorts of different uh, data sources. Um, and in this case, as I say, they're obviously uh, embedding all the GPS data and it's the wrong data, in fact, gyro data as well. So when you take the memory card out of your GoPro, we you download over Wi-Fi, whether you're accessing an MP4 file or an LRV file, all the data, all the GPS data and the wrong data is included in that. So that's the camera. I'm just going to talk a little bit about the limitations of that data. Now, as I said, the GPS data is very good. Um, it's actually updated at approximately 18 hertz. It's using GPS and Galileo. It's a modern, uh, G, uh, a modern GNSS um, receiver, so the data is very good quality. So there's only a small antenna, so obviously the better view of the sky it's got, as with all these things, then the, uh, the better the results are going to be. But from what I've seen, uh, even within inside a car, actually the signal's very good. Now, the, using the accelerometers within the unit, that's a lot more limited, actually. So the, the biggest issue is, so in a typical application, well, let's take the best case to start with. So it's, it's in a car, so this is either mounted on the windscreen or maybe on a roll bar mount. The, 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 um, the GoPro camera does, will have some vibration. It's almost unavoidable because there is a bit of a lever on there and it flexes around. And in some videos, you can actually see that effect. It looks a little bit like the video is melting because you can see the vibration is uh, aliasing with the frame rate. Um, <clears throat> now the effect on the accelerometers is that makes the acceleration data look really noisy because the, the camera is effectively flapping around like that. The, um, the accelerometer data is very noisy. That's in the best case really, that's when it's used in a car. If the, um, the camera is mounted on a helmet, so it's moving around as you move, um, or it's, on a, it's mounted on your chest, you're snowboarding or some other um, activity, then really the accelerometer data is almost completely useless. There's very, um, there's very little useful data that you can get out of it. So, um, and, and even more so with the gyro data, I have to say, I, I can't imagine any practical use for the gyro data. The problem with the gyros are, um, they're just not very good. I mean, they're very low, very low cost gyros. So they're the sort of gyros which are useful for gesture recognition. So if you have a smartphone, it can detect when you're picking it up or a games controller when you're tilting it. It'll work for that type of application. But for an application where you actually want to detect the angle and so on, almost completely useless. So in fact, in our software, we made the decision simply not to bother uh, using the gyro data at all. The accelerometer data is in there, but yeah, um, for, the, for the reasons of vibration and also the very variable orientation of the camera in a lot of applications, I would say that the main uh, data source within the camera was GPS, and in some cases you may be able to make use of the accelerometer data. Okay, so that's a bit about the camera itself and the sensors and what's included in, in, in the camera. So I'm now going to switch our attention to the, the, um, the software uh, and what variables that we can pull out of the camera. So we're going to switch to a screen view now. So I've installed the, um, the GoPro software on this computer. Um, I'm just going to start up analysis. So this is the main uh, data analysis uh, package. I'm going to start with a completely blank session. I'm going to go to this, uh, this uh, toolbar here and I'm going to start up the variable manager. So I'm just down here. And in this case, we're listing all the variables which are available from our software when it's used in GoPro mode. So if we look at the, the common ones to start with, so I'll expand on that tree. And I'm just going to read down the variables and just explain a little bit about what they are and where they're from and what use they are. So the first one is longitudinal acceleration. So this is straight off the GoPro accelerometers and longitudinal acceleration is the acceleration sensor in line with the lens, uh, if you like. So when you're accelerating the car, a, a vehicle, so you, you, you um, give it some, it's, um, some throttle, uh, you'll have a positive acceleration and when you're braking, you'll have a negative acceleration. And for a, a road car, that's typically a maximum about um, plus or minus 1G. Um, 
The next one down we have a braking flag, which is just derived from the longitude acceleration. Basically it shows when you're braking when you're accelerating, um, either a one or a zero. So that can be quite useful when you're looking at track maps and trying to detect when you're onto, onto the brakes. The next one is, um, is lateral acceleration, so that's cornering acceleration. So as you uh, go around a left or right corner, obviously you develop a, uh, an acceleration as you go around that corner. And again, for road tyres on a road car, that's a maximum plus or minus uh, 1G. Um, vector acceleration is, is a useful one. So vector acceleration is the combination of uh, longitudinal and lateral acceleration. So if you like, vector acceleration is your total acceleration. Um, so again, for a typical road car, a tyre can normally give you about 1G of maximum acceleration or maximum grip, let's say. So um, when you're doing race analysis, which I'm going to do a separate video on, actually vector acceleration is probably one of the key variables to see whether you're maximising grip around the track. Um, in terms of how it's calculated, it's not quite as simple as adding together longitudinal and lateral acceleration. It actually uses Pythagoras. So um, if you imagine longitudinal acceleration is um, one axis, lateral is the other axis, and vector is those two squared and they're square rooted. Okay, well, maybe a bit techy, but you, you get the idea. It's the combination of longitude and lateral. Vertical acceleration, um, well, it's there for completeness, although there's very few applications for it in real life. So most of the time, if your camera's mounted upright, it's just going to measure 1G of Earth's gravity. Speed, well, obviously that's a pretty key, uh, key variable, no matter what sport you're doing. Um, so speed is from um, either just the, um, just the GPS receiver, which measures speed, or depending on the analysis options, which I'm not going to go into now, but speed can be calculated from combining both the GPS data and the accelerometer data. And the advantage of combining the both is if you go under a bridge or the GPS data is a little bit patchy, then combining the, GP combining the accelerometer data with it as well um, can tidy that signal up. So that's speed. Um, distance, well, okay, obviously distance is just worked out from um, speed. Um, power output, well, that's a very interesting one. So because we know the acceleration of the vehicle and we know the speed of the vehicle, if you also uh, configure our software and you set up the aerodynamics in your car, so let's just take a quick look. So if we go to um, go to the vehicle options um, and then we look at um, the power tab, and then we look at the power tab, you can see that we can set um, the software up for the car's drag, rolling resistance, and total mass. And if you set that up correctly, then the software will work out the um, the power output of the vehicle, so that's the power at the rear wheels, and that can be set up to be kilowatts or horsepower and so on. Next ones are position X and Y, so that's used for track maps. Um, next one down is time slip, so that's how much faster or slower you're going than the previous lap. So, for example, if, um, if one lap time is one second slower than the previous lap time, then you can look at time slip and see um, how, where that, that second was lost. So that's a very useful variable for when you're doing some race data analysis. Um, time slip rate, again, super useful for race data analysis. Time slip rate is how quickly you're uh, losing time compared to your best uh, lap time. So we're going to do a separate video on race data analysis and I'll talk a lot more about using the total acceleration and time slip and time slip rate. Um, but that's the general idea anyway. They're, they're really useful flags for showing where you're gaining or losing time compared to the previous event. Um, change in heading, um, well, that's useful for some technical stuff. I'll, again, I'll, I'll talk about that a little bit in a, in a later video. Corner radius, that's, um, that's a useful one. So that's, that's derived from the GPS data, and that indicates what the current radius of the corners you're going around. So that's particularly useful for skiing, but also for looking at racing lines around a racetrack. Lean angle, so that's the estimated lean angle if you're using the uh, system on a motorcycle, which is obviously of direct interest. Um, and then we've got the time into the lap and the time into the current sector. So that's if you're doing lap and sector times. Um, very useful. So that's all the common variables. So you can see some of those are straight off the, um, off the GPS receiver or the accelerometer sensor, and some are what we call derived or calculated variables. The, um, the next section is the, the mass channels. So um, mass channel is pretty much as it says. It allows you to um, enter your own formulas for combining um, other standard variables. So for example, if you wanted a variable to say, um, to set a flag when your speed is above a certain threshold, you might use a mass channel. Or if you wanted to um, combine the accelerometers in, in a different way to make a correction or something. Anyway, they're, they're, um, they're calculated channels which the user can set up. Um, the next section is, uh, let's just minimize those. The next section is um, GPS data. So this is all data straight off the internal GPS receiver. So the common ones, they're mostly calculated, whereas the GPS ones, they're straight off the sensor so you can see the raw data. 
so these are more readily understood, I guess. So we've got GPS altitude, that's how high you are at sea level. We've got GPS lateral acceleration, GPS longitudinal acceleration. So in the common um, accelerometer, the, the, these, these acceleration values in common, these are off the accelerometer sensor. In a lot of applications, um, you may not be able to use those. So we discussed earlier that if you've got, for example, if, if the camera's on your helmet and you're snowboarding and you're moving your head around, the acceleration values straight off the accelerometer are completely useless. They're of no value whatsoever. Uh, in that case, you're better to use the GPS-derived accelerations because that doesn't rely on the accelerometer sensor. You're obviously just using the uh, GPS receiver. So they can be very useful. So we have um, GPS-derived lateral and GPS-derived longitudinal acceleration. GPS heading, well, that's the, um, that's the direction you're traveling. So uh, heading of zero degrees is north, for example, 180 is due south. Um, and then we have some accuracies, so that's the positional accuracy, the velocity accuracy, and the altitude accuracy. And maybe it's just worth mentioning here, in terms of um, accuracy of any GPS system, so it's not particular to, to the GoPro, um, but the, uh, the position is typically accurate to about one to two meters. The altitude is nowhere near as accurate, so mostly uh, the altitude is only accurate to about maybe five meters, something like that, under good conditions. Okay, so that's the accuracy figures. Um, next one is the raw velocity. Um, so that's the raw speed, if you like. So we said in the common section, this speed value, no data loaded, this, this speed value is uh, calculated from a combination of using the GPS data and maybe using the uh, accelerometer values as well. Whereas this raw velocity, that is just the velocity just read directly off the GPS receiver. So it's completely untouched. Um, and in some applications, it can be useful to refer back to that to see what's there going on. And then finally, we've got the GPS long, longitude and GPS latitude. So that's the raw positional data. Again, in the vast majority of cases, you'll be, um, it's more useful to use the position X and position Y rather than the raw longitude and latitude, but it's useful for some applications. Um, and now we've got the simulated variables. So this is the properly geeky stuff. So this is for more advanced users. So um, as well as using the uh, data straight off the GoPro camera, um, within our data analysis software, we also have a vehicle simulation system. So if you set up some parameters for your vehicle, so for example, maximum grip of the tires, weight of the vehicle, maximum power and so on, then our software will actually simulate how quickly a lap or a sector can be driven. And then it works out all these extra parameters. So I'm not going to go over them in detail now, but basically you've got simulated maximum longitudinal acceleration, maximum simulated lateral acceleration, um, speed, power, what gear you should have been in, time slip and time slip rate. So all these are simulated parameters. So in terms of race analysis, that gives you the option. You can either focus on um, comparing how well you drove a particular section compared with how well your best lap went, which is very useful. I have to say that's the more common mode of analysis. However, you've also got, with the simulated variables, you've also got the opportunity to look at how well you drove a lap compared with the best that the software says you could have possibly driven that lap. So that's a different type of analysis, which also can be very useful. Okay, so there was quite a lot of information there. Um, hopefully some of it made some sense. So in, in summary, the GoPro has um, both GPS and accelerometer sensors in there. Uh, the GPS data is excellent, um, and from our experience, um, really very useful for all sorts of applications. Accelerometer data, it can be useful in some circumstances, but you've got to be very careful about how you mount the camera, uh, make sure it's rigid, make sure it's square in the vehicle. And actually in many applications, let's say like, um, you know, the, if the camera's mounted on your helmet, or if you're snowboarding, or it's a body camera, the accelerometer data, you've just got to forget it. It's of no use at all. All the data is embedded in the MP4, or the LRV files that you take off. And when you load that um, MP4 or the LRV into our software, all that data is pulled out for you, it's processed. And not only do you get all the variables straight off the camera, you also get a number of really interesting derived variables, which really help you with um, uh, analysis of the data, um, particularly for motorsports and motorcycling, uh, track days and race events and so on, but also all kinds of other sports, including cycling, uh, snowboarding, skiing, um, and many others. Okay, well, I hope that gave you some idea of what's going on. Um, thanks for watching, and um, yeah, please watch our other videos. Thank you, bye.